Welcome back. This time we're talking about Ghost in the Shell, the original 1995 anime film from Japan. With the live action remake only days away, I figured this was a great time to revisit a film that I haven't seen in more than 15 years. I really got into anime while I was in college, and Ghost in the Shell was one of the first feature films that I got my hands on. Which, looking back, isn't a huge surprise, considering Ghost in the Shell, Akira, and Vampire Hunter D were some of the primary films that had made their way over to the States around that time. I'd later get a chance to watch Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence during its very limited domestic run in theaters, and I hope to have a review of that up this week as well. But for now, let's focus in on this original 1995 film. It's directed by Mamoru Oshii, who also did the sequel, and based on the manga by Masumi Shiro. And all in all, the film holds up quite well 22 years later. The animation is still beautiful, even when it's depicting graphic scenes of violence. In today's era of computer-generated animation, it's easy to forget just what was accomplished with hand-drawn cell animation back in its heyday. As far as the story goes, it definitely has that cyberpunk mentality, and you can definitely feel the inspirations that it got from such live-action films as Blade Runner. Returning to the film, again, after 15 or so years, and now as a movie critic, I do have to say that it's not an exactly a perfect film. Um, there's some pacing issues, and it's somewhat unusual mix of high-octane brutal action with lengthy dialogue scenes where characters are debating you know, moral and philosophical issues is not going to be for everyone. But that being said, this is still an excellent movie. The story is set in is what was then the near future, and it's a world in which the internet, or the 1995 version of the internet, has pretty much taken over society. Everyone is literally connected to the digital world. Um, they actually hook in. They have interfaces into their brain that they wire in to connect with these computers. Again, this is a very mid-90s conceptualization of what the internet was going to be. And in this world, there is a section of the government known as Section 9. And their focus is sort of twofold. They investigate computer-based crimes as well as handle a lot of the dirty work that the other government agents don't want on their books. And the agents of this section are almost entirely made up of androids. They have human brains, but a significant amount of biomechanical parts around those brains. Our main character is Major Motoko Kasanagi, and her partner is Bato. The film opens with them kind of taking on one of their more shady missions. And it really doesn't jump into the main story right away. We get a few different elements that immediately don't seem to be connected. But as the story progresses, we see how everything um, kind of fits together as they are investigating this serial hacker known as the Puppet Master. And he is able to actually back hack into people connected to this um, internet and is able to actually make them do things, actually control their minds, hack their minds. And as the Major and Bato are investigating this hacker, they find themselves sort of ensnared in a larger conspiracy that may or may not involve other governments as well as their own government. And that's more or less the setup for this story. And as I said, there are scenes of extremely brutal violence. Um, case in point, the opening scene. Um, and then there are moments where you have the Major and Bato on a ship, and they're just having this philosophical discussion about whether they really are alive and what does it mean to be an android, what does it mean to be human. And they always use the term ghost, but more or less they're talking about souls or at least the essence that you, makes you you and how that relates to both humans and androids. So there's a lot of very interesting things being talked about in here, but it does sometimes 
make the overall pacing a little wonky. There's actually several sort of action moments that happen completely off screen and we only hear about them after the fact because we were actually following our characters talking. And I don't have a, I don't have an issue with that, but it is it does make for a non-typical pacing for this film. So I just want you to know going in that that's there and if that's something that turns you off on films that this that may be an issue for you with Ghost in the Shell. Now returning to the animation again it is beautiful. Um, the, the backgrounds there's just so much detail given to these oftentimes just pillow shots where it's just um, it's a it's sort of a transitional scene and it's just there for a few seconds and it, an amazing amount of time had to have gone in to draw these backgrounds. Um, there's actually a sequence, uh, I would say it's right around where the second act is going into the third act, where the film just sort of slows down completely and allows the audience to kind of think about what had been discussed in the previous scene. And it just kind of cuts between various scenes of the city and city life and human life and it thematically connects to what we had seen, um, but not a lot, whole lot is actually happening, but the sheer beauty of the animation, um, since not a lot is actually happening in these scenes, we can kind of just sit back and just kind of be at awe at what was accomplished 22 years ago with hand-drawn anima animation. So Ghost in the Shell is a very interesting sci-fi cyberpunk type of story it's got some very good action it's got some very interesting conversations that are is going to leave you thinking even after the film is over and all in all it's actually a pretty short movie by today's standards it's about 83 minutes long which back in the 90s was pretty typical for an animated film nowadays you know the, the run times have gotten longer so it does feel a little short but they do get a lot out of those 83 minutes. As I mentioned at the beginning, I do hope to have a review of Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence up as well if I can find time to do it this week. And of course, I'll have a review of the remake up this weekend. So for now, I'm going to turn it over to you. If you've seen the original film, what did you think about it? As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some other reviews, and until next time, I'll see you at the movies.